Hello chess friends and welcome to Yazar of Chess Channel and welcome to a new chess strategy and tactics video. So in this video we'll talk about the endgame stage again. Today we'll talk about a very 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 specific endgame that can happen to you. Today our subject will be the possibility of the fortress in rook versus queen chess endgames. And of course the queen versus rook chess endgame is supposed to be the winning endgame for the player that has the queen against the rook. But in many many crazy positions, in many wild positions there is the possibility of the fortress in which the player with the rook can build really a compact setup, a really a solid structure in which he is not allowing uh, the other pieces of the opponent that has the queen on the board to participate in the attack, especially I mean uh, of the king, because in the queen versus rook endgame you're also supposed to play with your king, but now when you build the fortress you're not allowing your opponent's king to participate in the attack and you can build, as I said, the solid structure and which leads into really, really beautiful and thematic draw. So, okay, let's start uh, with this theme. Uh, the first position that I've here prepared for you leads into this uh, possibility of the fortress in Rook vs. Queen chess endgames. Maybe just for fun, you can pause the video and try to see here the drawish idea uh, for white. White moves and makes a draw. Otherwise, uh, as I said, we're analyzing now this position for ourselves. So first of all, if you want to really, as I said, pause the video and then uh, we can we can analyze then this beautiful, beautiful chess endgame together. Okay, here's the problem. If we start to play something like King Chaff 3, which you in many, many lines, which you in many, many chess endgames are supposed to do, for instance, in many chess endgames, I would simply suggest to you that you play active with your king, but not in this one. In this one, the king has to be static in this position, the king has to be secure. For instance, we're trying to play active with our king, but it's not working because after bishop to f4 and the rook to d7, maybe you're trying to get uh, the rook behind, applying the so-called tarashul. The tarashul says that you should bring your rook behind your enemy's pawns. The problem is now that black has this beautiful resource of bishop to b8. Um, the problem about this move is of course that you cannot deliver perpetuals. You can deliver some checks maybe here, but never really perpetual. So white will uh, simply play something like rook to uh, b7. Now we have a promotion, the game is over. The same thing happens if you play even rook to d8 instead of rook to d7. Again, black has uh, this idea, king to b3. Again, you can place maybe your rook here on a8, but you can never really de deliver perpetuals because this square is taken um, here by the dark square bishop. So this whole idea, king to f3, and then we play active with the rook is not working. The only way to survive this chess endgame is to play a beautiful rook takes d2. Really, really wild stuff. Allowing here uh, the promotion of the queen on a1, and now we play on this fortress idea. But there is a very, very important rule in this fortress ideas in the rook versus queen chess endgame. Only but only this fortress is possible when the king is cut off now here on the fourth rank. If this king would be somewhere already here on the second rank, imagine now the position of the king here, then it's completely, completely winning here for black, actually. Look at this. In this particular case, it's a really beautiful draw. We just play rook to g3, rook to e3. Uh, here, after king to f5, what you should not do uh, is to play king to uh, rook to f3, because you get probably pinned here with queen to e4, and then g4 is going to happen. You have really, really huge, huge issues to survive this attack by black. So, as I said, you just lean back and you play rook to g3 rook to e3 and your opponent doesn't have access with the king because look at this again the rook is cutting off also the files cutting off also the ranks whatever you do you can get the king closer to uh d4 but now we just play king to g1 even if you play something like king to uh, queen to f4 we play king to g2 you can always deliver a couple of checks it doesn't matter but never really perpetuals and never but never you can uh, include the king into the game so it's really a beautiful beautiful spectacular and amazing amazing thematic draw that white force. As I said, in the beginning, uh, there was this possibility of the move rook to d2. Very, very wild stuff. But let's see now a different position. This position actually happened in one game between Zhu Chen against uh, Svetlana Petrenko. Uh, here we have a similar position, but only a similar. It's not the same, because here also uh, Zhu Chen tried rook takes d2 with the same idea to allow the promotion of the queen, but Actually, this is not working because in order to build the fortress, we have to play rook to d3, rook to e3. 
we have seen that this concept is working. But when we deliver the check on d3, then the king has access to the second rank and it's in a different story than black is again winning the game in the game rook to d3 was played anyway for instance what we could try is to play maybe the move king to g2 but now you see there is this possibility of the move g4 again you try maybe something like rook to d3 we get the king closer you're trying something like rook to e3 and after king to d2 and something like i don't know rook to g3 there is always this possibility after queen to a8 uh, you maybe try something like i don't know uh, king to g1 there is now even this possibility of a beautiful queen to f3 a really really wild stuff you play something like rook takes f3 then g takes f3 is winning the game and whatever you do you maybe get the king closer we get this one we go into an opposition and in one moment you have to step back from the defense of the pawn this is again a beautiful beautiful thematic here a win for black so this is one of the motifs that you can use in order to win this game very very easily very effectively so you see in this particular uh, game between Zhu Chen and um, uh, Svetlana Petrenko here rook to d3 was immediately played but now look at this king to c4 was played by uh, Svetlana Petrenko and now we have reached the same position that we have talked about in the beginning look at this we have played rook to e3 and now again another blunder the only way maybe to force a win is to play here queen to, uh, uh, king to, uh, queen to h1 at least getting the queen behind but now after move king to c4 and king uh, rook to e3 queen to d1 now we have reached a similar position uh, king to g2 leads into the fortress idea and after a couple more moves both players agree to a draw so see even great players great top gms are missing this uh, ideas are missing this simple rules of rook versus queen chess endgame so as i said here in this particular position after um, even the move rook to d3 let's go back to this uh, critical moment so as i said after a rook to d3 we're supposed to simply play king to c2 now rook to e3 can happen now we get the queen here on h1 now look at this we deliver a new check we deliver a couple of checks if you step back this pawn is weak that's the issue we'll simply take it and then it's again game over even if you try here queen uh, king to g3 then of course queen to g1 is going to happen again it's a messed up game we'll pick up this pawn even if you try something like you, you can also try king to d2 getting the king closer again with queen to g1 uh, simply it's a um, easy win here for the player that has the queen on the board because the king is now very very close to the action we got the queen behind it's a different story black uh, pardon me white cannot build this amazing fortress idea in this particular setup so let's dive into a really really wild position here it's really crazy it's a beautiful uh game played by yuri Averbach against igor bondarevsky first of all we should notice here that black is winning so if black plays now this game correctly white is uh, lost here for sure so my question here for you is first of all pause the video and try to see now the winning idea here for black black moves and wins the game otherwise again we'll see uh here to the video what happened in this crazy game the game actually ended with a draw because um it was really really crazy how the game went on but as i said just for fun try to solve now this particular chess and game stuck okay here igor bodarevsky played the beautiful move d3 and that's the correct move that meets with the idea uh to create this similar position like we have talked before the problem is here uh, for for uh, white is of course after rook to f3 uh, rook from f to d3 queen to d3 you cannot pick up now um here um the queen because after king takes d3 this is a passer it's far away from the action of course white king cannot get closer it's game over here for white so here yuri averbach realized the potential possibility of uh, uh of the fortress idea that we have talked about previously but now after rook to a4 my question here for you is what's now the best next move here for black so again pause the video and try to solve now this uh, puzzle pause the video and win the game for black black moves and wins the game okay here the best move is of course to play king to b3 getting the king on the second rack like we have talked uh, talked about previously so now there is no possibility of the fortress although uh there are two pawns but these are double pawns again white can hold this position with the rook always here on on the third rank but that's not the issue the issue is here that the king can get to the second rank so now in the original game here uh igor bondarevsky played the move king to d5 get the king simply far away from the action but still 
black can win the game because really, really crazy things happen. And for rook to h4, again, my question here for you is, what would you do now in this particular position? Black moves and wins the game. It's really hard to to um, study these chess endgames because they're so specific. If you just play one tiny little inaccuracy, you could be lost or you could maybe uh, draw a completely winning game. Because in many chess endgames, if you have maybe analyzed them at home, you probably noticed that there is only one winning move and it's of course something like plus 20 this move, but every other move is 0, 0.0. It's simply a drawish move. So now again, there is simply only one winning move here for black. And unfortunately for uh, Igor Bondarevsky, he did, didn't see that he missed this move. So as I said, I'll give you a couple more seconds. Maybe you can see it. Okay, here, uh, Igor Bondarevsky should have played the move queen to g6. Again, cutting off, not allowing the pieces to be compact here. That's now the most important thing. After something like king to f1, that could have, of course, happened. Now we play queen to f5. We're not allowing this maneuver. Rook to h3, rook to e3. That's something that we should not allow in this particular position. If that happens, then it's a thematic draw. Look at this. You play something like rook to a4, it will deliver a check. You get the king on g2, but now with h5, you don't have the opportunity to play this idea. Uh, rook to e4, rook to e3. So the whole strategy to build a fortress is in this particular position not working. Again, you may be trying rook to h3, rook to um, e3, but now look at this. We deliver a new check. You again step back to f1. Now we attack the rook. And even if you try, of course, something like rook to a4 again, we simply get the king here. And after something like rook to d4, we can also pa uh, push this pawn. Now, at least we have cut off the king, though the, the king cannot participate in uh, in the fortress. So it's now completely, completely winning endgame here, of course, uh, for uh, for black. So in the original game, here king to e6 was played, and now after rook to h3, uh, king to uh, e4, king to h2 was played. Black desperately tried to get the king somehow into the game, but now we have again this fortress idea. Look at this after queen to d5, uh, rook to g3. Here, black desperately tried again, as I said, to include the king into the game, but the rook is cutting off any possibility for the king. We have rook to h3, we have rook to e3 by um, um, Yuri Averbach. Here, again, a couple of moves by. Uh, by the king and now again rook to e3 after a couple more moves so see we're staying just on the third rank uh, black doesn't have access uh, to the position and in this particular position both players agree to a draw really really wild stuff so see even in the highest level of chess uh, this whole concept this whole idea is missed sometimes uh, as i said here first of all in the beginning of uh, of the study uh, you don't have to play the game like this let's go to the critical moment so here king to d5 was played instead of king to b3 is immediately winning the game. So you have to have your access with your king on the second, then on the first rank, you will get your chances in the queen versus rook endgame. But if you allow the fortress, you see it's a beautiful and thematic draw. So, okay, I hope that you enjoyed the study. I really enjoyed it a lot. This is something that we should know in rook versus queen chess endgames. Uh, if you want to see more about chess opening, chess strategy, tactics, middle games, chess endgames, check out our basics in chess series and also my Become a Master in Chess series here on my YouTube chess channel. And if you like this content, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. See you soon with some more videos. And what do we say? Chess is the best, of course.